Devon. Hey, William. Oh my goodness, it is a beautiful sunshine filled day here in South London, honey. But what city is on our mind? Antwerp, Brussels, Lyon. Yes, Belgium is the point because Belgium's French language broadcaster RTBF has revealed their Eurovision 2022 contestant. And who is it? Jeremy Mathieu. I love how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about it? Let's do this! And everyone in the dog park just looked at us like we are crazy. They gotta know who Jeremy is. Jeremy is amazing. He won the most recent season of The Voice Belgium. That's a tough competition. Mm. Can I give you some names? Roberta Bellarosa. Luca Kreuzberg, honey. Loic Natet. Oh, God, yeah, and he's now a judge on it. Honey, Blanche. Yeah. Listen, this show produces great voices, but more importantly, great talents. Mm. And he is their latest discovery. He is a footballer as well as a singer. And he speaks multiple languages, right? English, French, Dutch. Yes, mm. so he represents all of Belgium, really, which is Absolutely. quite interesting, because mm. he grew up in the Dutch-speaking part, but his parents are from the Congo, so they spoke French, and then he learned French again in school. Point of story, he is showing Lanter Connexite Hunty. Absolutely. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but look, Devin, we've got to talk about his voice on The Voice. What do you think of the selection and his abilities? His abilities are not even in question. I mean, did you hear him perform Earth Song by Michael Jackson? That was my least favorite. And it still gave me chills. And it still gave me chills. You raise a good point. So Earth Song, actually, let me take a step back. Basically, The Voice is ultimately a karaoke contest. Let's be real. These are cover songs. These are cover songs. These are not original songs. And so what's important for Eurovision is to bridge the gap between covering other people's songs and having your own songs. Absolutely. Now on this show, he killed Christina Aguilera's Say Something. Oh God, yeah. The emotion, the voice, the poise. That was the moment for me where I was like, this, ki this guy has got it. He oh, for me, it. it was Labyrinth, yes. I mean, like, ah, that was just like, was oh excellent. my God. I was just like, yeah. The power, his ability to take someone else's song and make it feel like his own, mm. very important. Earth song, however, and maybe it's just because it's overdone. It felt banal and bland. It, I, but that's just song choice. That's not talent. That's mm, song choice. No, no, I, 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 I really liked it. And don't forget, we're looking at him in isolation, not, yeah. you know, not comparing him with his colleagues who he beat anyway. You know what? But at Eurovision, the field is even tougher. Also, his Bruno Mars cover of that disco song. Mm. Silk, what is this, Silky Wilky? Silky, Silky song, Silky. Silky that Kong. was probably my least favorite. So I don't like that type of music, but I like his physical presence, his ability to move, to get into the groove, if you will. Basically what I'm trying to say, <gasps> say, say, <gasps> whoo, say is it showed he's a performer. In a Eurovision, it's not just, you know, the voice, it's not just a song, it's the performance. Absolutely. I think he's an excellent choice though. I mean, the only reservation I have is I feel like Eurovision really, you know, I feel like it's an earned game. If you're going to be handpicked by your broadcaster, I want to delve into your catalogue. And a catalogue he does not have. I don't think any of the voice contestants have a catalogue. Luca Kreuzberg has just released her debut single, for instance. True. Granted, she was with Hoover Phonic. But, you know, the voice is very much about the voice. And again, it goes back to bridging what do you do next? Even Blanche only released her album several years after she won The Voice. Interestingly, though, uh, Eurovision is about the song. Yes. <laughs> it's very much about the song. You can be Sergei Lazarev. You can be an upstart from Moldova. The field is the same. You know what I'm saying? You're starting from zero. Zero. Unless you're Big Five, of course, then it's a completely different well, game. But Europe, Europe doesn't, <laughs> let's just say Europe doesn't know your sugar, okay? The countries that can vote for you don't know your sugar, so you gotta bake something fresh, girl. <laughs> but look, something else I wanna point out is he worked with BJ Scott. She is the Alabama born American singer songwriter. Church music, gospel music connects them. And I wonder, and so do a lot of our readers, if he might go for something gospel-orientated. Or just a, a ballad, you know, because 
he leans towards that because his voice is so emotive mm. and he's such an expressive singer. It's difficult to execute that with a dance song, you know, because then production takes over, right? Well, so if you're relying on your vocals, the best way to showcase it, a lot of people feel, is like a real power ballad. Let's actually shout out to Robin Gallagher in New Zealand, wee wee blogger extraordinaire. She has shared some thoughts with us via video link. Robin, roll the tape. So Jeremy Macchiese is heading to Italy on behalf of Belgium this year. We don't actually know all that much about him other than what we've seen on The Voice. Um, he doesn't seem to release any singles on his own and there's not really anything of him like on YouTube that isn't related to The Voice. So what all we've seen is the performances that he's done on The Voice and it's sort of particular kinds of songs performed in a particular kind of way, not always with like a full arrangement though getting further on the series it was more sort of fleshed out but sort of in the audition stages it was quite basic. Um, but there's definitely a sense of the kind of music that he likes. The voice gave him exposure to lots of different types of genres, but there were kinds that he really, he did really well with. And when you look at the kind of um, artists that he cites as uh, personal influences like um, Michael Jackson, Stromae, um, Otis Redding, there's a strong sort of sense of soul, pop, R&B, that kind of flavour. So it would be really good to see him tackle a song in that kind of genre at Eurovision. It's not always the kind of music we sing on stage at Eurovision. Um, it takes a particularly talented kind of singer to be able to do well. And I think he really has what it takes. So He's been working with the same songwriter that was behind um, Blanche, Blanche and Elliot's songs in their years. And it kind of gives you a sense that it will be perhaps a modern sounding song, like not a throwback. And, you know, we've seen them on The Voice do songs um, like Silk Sonic, Labyrinth, that kind of modern soul R&B style so it would be really good to see him bring something like that to Eurovision um, I think yeah Jeremy is a good choice for for Belgium um, they, they've got a good system with picking acts from the voice so it's people who have experience with television performances with you know playing to the cameras and getting the public on your side he seems to be a really like a really likable guy, and that always does well at Eurovision. Um, yeah, it, he's a good a good first name to have for this season, and it will be really interesting to see what kind of song that he does end up bringing to Italy next year. Okay, so Robin brings up a great point, you know, shouting out to the artist who he likes. Um, Jeremy has listed Michael Jackson, soul legend Otis Redding, Belgi Belgian musical icon Stromae, and Belgian Congolese rapper Damso among his influences. Now look, I hope he leans toward the latter two, the Stromae and the Damso, rather than the Michael Jackson and the Otis Redding. Because I am so tired of people kind of covering, not covering, but drawing inspiration from these old school acts. Like we've heard this so many, so many times where our Stromae, that's exciting and new. That's different. It it has a different vibe. I would have been it okay a, with Janet Jackson though. With Miss Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, is not here. Um, so Devin, tell me, what do you think about his influences? Which direction would you like to see him go? The direction I would like, he likes football. He loves football. He loves yeah. music. Give me a Jesse Matador World Cup song. <gasps> I would love that. I think that would be really exciting. Well, you funny know? enough, Jesse Matador also has Congolese roots. Yeah. As does Tusa from Sweden. And he loves football. Did Gaetana as well. You yes, could, yeah, yeah, Gaetana. you can be my guest. Yes. yes. I love the Congolese diaspora slaying the Eurovision Song Contest. And I, Jesse Matador loves football as well. So... It's that combo, isn't it? I love that reference point because for a long time, and even now, Jesse Matador's Ale Ola Ole is one of the top watched videos on the official Eurovision YouTube channel. That was one of my favorite songs that year. I think there's, 
before real... you could buy YouTube views. So <laughs> let's just point that out. I will not ask which artist you are referring to. But what I will say is, oh, what a cute dog. Hi, baby. Hello. 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 <laughs> what a so sweet little friendly. bulldog. How can oh, we see oh, this dog? Oh, look at this cute pug. Oh, oh wow. Oh, you are sweet. <laughs> what a sweet dog. Wow, Hello. so friendly. <laughs> So sweet! So sweet! Where were we, babes? You were talking about the diaspora. Oh, essentially, with Jesse Matador, the vibe of that song, it was so international. Ale, it, ale, was, ale, 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 ale. it was European, but it was global. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And mm. that's what I love. And I think Incorporating his identity and yeah. his passion into that music. Because, it's again, it serves as some kind of football anthem, doesn't and, it? And in an organic way, mm. it wasn't forced. And that's what I love about Stromae. Stromae draw, draws on so many different rhythms and sounds and influences. Um, Papa big Ute. deal, oh, big God. deal. Papa Ute. Mm. Big da, deal, da, 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 da. Everything. Oh, anyways. So I'm hoping that Jeremy can break away from the cover mold. I don't need Michael Jackson 2.0, Bruno Mars 3.0. I need I, Janet Jackson. No, I need Jeremy. <laughs> I need Jeremy. <laughs> is what I need. But again, he showed us he can do emotion. He can do slayage dance. He can do it all. Oh, by the way, by the way, a lot of people predicted that he would be the singer because he was spotted in the recording studio with one of Blanche's songwriters and also one of Elliot's songwriters. So leaning towards that dark pop, less predictable sound. And I think that's what he needs. Do you know what I mean? I think that will be the perfect mesh, the perfect meeting of minds. Uh, I, just because he's, he's sharing the same studio wall, does that, I mean, a studio is- Songwriter. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, let me say this then. We talked about Christina Aguilera's Say Something, mm -hmm. that he was able to take that song and make it feel like his own. What can he do with a song written for him or by him? Yeah. More mileage, boo. More mileage. More mileage, boo. I ain't talking Miley Cyrus. We're talking <laughs> mileage hitting the road. Belgium's a funny one, though, because sometimes they get it so right. And sometimes they bring a Japanese kabuki warrior on stage to kind of do nothing. He had an um, Elliot, amazing performer, lovely person, good Great songs. song. But the staging led us You down. better wake up. Yeah, girl. You better oh, I'm woke. wake up. I am still woke. And um, in the sense of being awake. And then what was the other one? Cynic. Cynic. Oh. Great voice, great performer, great song. But the staging, she disappeared. It was too, it was too dark. It was too dark. Um, and you know, other times, case in point, Blanche. Yeah, good. But I mean, good was, enough for The song top. was like a good, winner. Good. The staging was not a winner. I still think finishing in the top five is rather high. I know it's a well deserved. I'm sorry, that song is one of the best Eurovision songs of all time. Blanche's City Lights. Sing it, bear. All alone in the day. You know what's so funny? I have to tell you this funny story. I was at King's Cross Station waiting for my train, and there's this little Australian cafe. And so I'm sitting there having my eggs, and I'm walking out, and she walks in, and like you forget. Eurovision had been several, you know, it was like a year after the fact. I was like, Blanche, darling! <laughs> you met Blanche? Well, yeah, but she never, she was like, excuse me. <laughs> because it was like, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Because Eurovision had passed quite some time before. Um, but I, I was like, oh, it's like yesterday. It's like yesterday. And you met Blanche in person at King's Cross? It wasn't a meeting, because we didn't really talk, but I bumped into her. Literally. Girl, how come you're just telling me this for the first time? Girl, because in London, you're always bumping into people. You are. I've seen, I've seen I don't know where she girl, hang out. I got those photos of you with J-Lo. I got those photos of you with Jay-Z. Let's not even talk about it. I think Loic Nautet is the example of when they got the song, performer, staging all correct. Mm -hmm. With Blanche, they had the performer and the song. They just didn't have the staging. Laura Tesoro, interestingly. They, staging. It, they got staging. Elevated. Song was okay. Song was okay. And she was a brilliant performer. Yeah. Um, so we just, Very floriste, isn't it? Oh, but... I, dare I say that performance was better than anything I've seen from Floor East recently. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, it was good. It was good. It felt real. Yeah, like, that was good. I was so impressed with it. In any case, 
That's what we think. What do you think? Is Jeremy the man of your rev? <laughs> Let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. There's another dog coming to say hello. Do I smell like a dog or something? Why are these dogs sniffing it's me? It's your perfume, hunting. I guess we are sitting in a dog park surrounded by dog poo. So they might smell other dogs and want to come over here. I have a question for you, William Lee Adams. How many of these dogs do you think have Pinterest accounts? Deep one. <laughs> How many of these dogs do you think have a Pinterest account? I'm going to say none of them. Get your knitting pins out, girl, because we are on Pinterest. What's your, what's your favorite mood board? Oh, do you know what, babe? It's called... Jeremy Maquiez. Girl, there'll be a lot of musical inspiration, <laughs> dance inspiration, beauty inspiration. Can I just say one other thing? His love of football reminds me of Serena Williams because, you know, our girl completed hundreds of hours of coursework in doing nails to become a certified nail technician. And she told Oprah Winfrey that's one of the reasons she's a Grand Slam queen because she had interests outside of her main interest of tennis. Wow. Yeah, so Jeremy's football career, you know, he's signed a one-year deal with the League Two club. This might be the making of him, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, in any case, we'll see you later. I like that fact. Yeah. Bye. Bye.